podcast. We demystify what goes on behind the therapy room door. Join us on this voyage of discovery and co-creative conversations. This is The Therapy Show, Behind Closed Doors podcast, with Bob Cook and Jackie Jones. Yeah. Welcome back to the next episode of The Therapy Show, Behind Closed Doors, with myself, Jackie Jones, and the wonderful Mr. Bob Cook. And episode 107, we're going to be talking about the nice therapist phenomena in the therapy process. Right. Which you've just made... said off, off air, that it's, it's a Bob Cookism. <laughs> it, it is. Before I get there, when you said 107, it made me it made me think of the term, you know, 101, 101. Yeah. Which I know is my podcast again, but that's the term for the uh, beginning um, course that people do uh, for two days in learning the fundamentals of TA. Yeah. So it made me smile when he said 107. No, this podcast, I, I, when I was putting, you know, I think of a lot of the titles. And when I'm thinking of what, what I think would be interesting for po- people who listen to these podcasts to listen to um, and what actually goes on in the therapy room, then one of the, 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 sort, of, the sort of concepts I call is therapists who are overly nice for many different reasons. Yeah. And in their overly niceness, that's a word, being over nice. Yeah. And miss the clients. Um, so I'd like to talk about that. And I suppose the first thing we both of us could sort of like discuss is I'm quite happy to start off what we mean by nice. <laughs> you know, what, what makes a nice therapist? Because I often talk to many of my trainees and colleagues in the institute and, and people ask me all the time, well, not all the time, you know, what, what's your therapist like? And, you know, and, and then you, you, you might ask trainees and they say, I don't know if I would ask that question, but it's come up, oh, my therapist is so nice. Yeah. And that's an interesting one, isn't it? So wh- what I, when people say that, I wonder, because I'll make a statement here. Therapy, for me, I don't think should be about having a nice, cosy chat. Me too. I was going to say, I don't <laughs> think we should be nice as therapists. <laughs> Even though in my personal life, I want to be nice and I am a bit of a people pleaser, I'm definitely not in the therapy room. Yeah. You see, the, the, the third year trainees who start, or second year trainees who start seeing clients for the first time, I think they often come from this place because they don't want to upset the client or they, they want to uh, have smooth psychotherapy sequences or they want to, um, you know, have, not have any conflict. Yeah. That, yeah. Actually, yeah. Or, as they start to develop and start seeing clients, hopefully they'll come to the realisation that having conflict, or at least being, a, you know, not shying away from conflict um, and challenging people constructively is where therapists need to go. Yeah. Those, those are words that I've just written down here, Bob. I write words down as you're speaking and I've put challenge it. For me, the, this, I think there's something that we need to discuss around being challenging and not being nice, but also about being aware of shame and non-judgmental uh-huh. and how there's a fine line again that <clears throat> can be challenging without causing shame or judging yeah and we haven't a lot yeah absolutely we haven't really come down to what definition of what niceness is i suppose i i went off but i think often the people think of a nice therapist as somebody who maybe won't go towards areas of difficulties Mm, yeah won't challenge stay in the safe space (laughs) Yeah, yeah, and that's really the opposite of where a therapist needs to go. Yeah. So say a little bit more about that last bit. I, you know, now we've said that um, about shame you were talking about and challenge and 
go not not well, to me, it's kind of like the opposite of being nice do you know what i mean if, if we're not being nice then are we being challenging and if we're being challenging can that be seen as being judgmental and you know i think i'm really always conscious of shame in the therapy room and not wanting the client to feel shame so if i'm being challenging or not agreeing with them all the time is that going to be something that i need to be aware of in the in the process what's your conclusion of these many years of clinical work then jackie well, at one, I, I openly say, you know, I, I hope you don't feel like you're being judged when I'm saying this, but I disagree with what you're saying or, or you know, I want to put it to you another way, but I will make a point of saying this is not me judging you in any way, shape or form, and I will literally say that to them. Oh, you actually are that explicit. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, with certain clients that I, I know potentially, they will look at everything on the negative spectrum. <laughs> oh, oh. Yeah. And do they judge, or would your clients that you're thinking about, in inverted commas, judge the nice client, the nice therapist who doesn't go towards conflict and um, stays in the sort of psychological safe place? And uh, Would they judge that? something they want i think the majority of them would be quite happy to do that and to just come and offload and not necessarily take action and do anything different and i think that's those are the ones that i'm thinking of and do you then think that a nice therapist has high success rates no no that's that's the bit isn't absolutely it absolutely not they often <laughs> I think the nice in inverted commas therapists that won't go towards perhaps challenge or they shy away from conflict or they intellectualize things or they are perhaps over rescuing with clients. Um, I understand all the reasons for that, by the way. And I don't think it's necessarily, in fact, I suppose I'll be a bit stronger. I don't think it helps healing. No. It often preserves the status quo yeah and i believe clients don't come to therapy i believe clients come to therapy actually to um move away from their status quo or or spoke and get a new script on the road mm. yeah i'm not saying that i go in hard with clients from the first session i might be a nice therapist in the first couple of sessions and stay in that safe zone mm. Mm. yeah See, if, if therapists stay in a safe zone not much really happens no no it's the same as staying in our comfort zone we're just repeating the same things over and over and we know we know how it works yeah it's a bit like I mean, I, I pass on a bit unfair, nothing much happens. But because, you know, for some clients, having a safe environment uh, uh, to play out their similar scripts might actually be some sort of um, change. However, I think not much really does happen except for the continuation of the script they came in with. Yeah. Um, I think uh, that's one concept. Another concept about nice therapists, in inverted commas, is that clients may sort of not only go not go to where they need to go, but also, uh, and I'm going to use a psychoanalytical term here, they may manipulate therapists so they don't go to where they need to go to. Yeah. I think I was probably manipulated in the early days. Absolutely. Yeah. And often the people who are nice therapists in inverted commas may and doesn't don't go towards challenge and don't go towards conflict and don't uh, you know afraid of say expression of emotions in the psychotherapy. Um they 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 may really have scripts. You know, well, they will have scripts that determine that type of therapy. Usually, though, 
um, they won't be successful if they're mm. pissed because clients will sort of realise that. And much more important, um, they won't actually achieve much healing from that position, I don't think. Yeah. Yeah. I, w I want to say they'll get bored <laughs> if we're just staying in that safe space all the time. Yeah, I would imagine. I don't. I don't. I don't think they keep paying the money, keep coming back. Personally, oh. now I think I'm going to qualify niceness a bit more. I think therapists, or in vertical's nice therapists, are the usually are therapists who stay in their own particular safe mode. So, for example, <clears throat> if inter intellectualization is a mode that the therapist feels secure and safe into, then they may take clients into um, intellectualization therapy, if it's a, such a word. In other words, yeah, uh, you know, more cognitive behavioral therapy. I think where yeah. Um, are looking at the past and the etiology of the trauma is not in that frame. Um, CBT is much more that you deal with the uh, thinking distortions in the present and in our in our language uh, contaminations um, and and you keep away from emotions and you keep away from the past. Now can Good. Can you have that be that is is successful from that position where you're not going towards the past and you're not going towards emotional change? I think you can do. And if that's what I, if that's what we're talking about in a way, in the world of nice therapists, in terms of where they stay with their own secure frame of reference and they keep their clients in that secure frame of reference, um, it doesn't mean it. You know things won't happen but it'll be at a different level than the type of psychotherapy that I think of. In a I, of I agree I think change will happen but it's at a, a different level yeah absolutely. That's that's a, probably a better way to look at it it's at a different a different level and a different dimension. Yeah yeah because you know I, I'm an ex-foster carer and it, you know, some of the, the kids that we looked after, they they would be, you know, able to go to CAMS or, or have, you know, some sort of psychological support. And a lot of them didn't want it because they didn't want to talk about the past. They weren't ready and they didn't want to do it. So they would go, you know, but keep it on a very safe level for them. And I'm not saying that they didn't find it helpful and change didn't occur. But, yeah, they, they chose not not to open those boxes they didn't want to and i suppose some adults do that they don't want to go back well yes absolutely they do i mean you know cbt therapists not don't go back into people's history developmentally and they actually believe um and they probably would quote some research to me um that by staying in the here and now and looking at cognitive distortions and uh, integrating um, new behavioral change um, is the evidence not necessarily to go towards emotional conflict or developmental healing in the past. Yeah. Yeah. But again, there are those people that that's where they, they want to go. <laughs> That's what you're just saying, yeah. yeah. And uh, uh, and then, in a way, being inverted commas nice therapists here, it's um, and they stay in their own comfort zones. Um, for some people, some 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 people, like you say, um, will be part of keeping the therapy at that that level, if you like. Mm -hmm. Um. They won't want to go to different levels. 
I also think nice is a strange word because it's usually in the world of, it's usually connected with the world of adaptation. Yeah. You know, so I don't necessarily want to podcasters to hear this is a derogatory word because I think it's often that therapists, especially if they haven't done their own work, will adapt maybe to what the clients want or don't want or whatever's going on in their own heads um, by being, you know, um, shying away from conflict. They will adapt in a certain way, which somebody might say, looking on, that that's a safe yeah. uh, place to be. Yeah. And like you said, the listeners, you know, who are listening to this, we, we don't want them to have the impression that we want them to be not nice all the time. Yeah, <laughs> it's not that. about saying, right, well, I can't be nice in the therapy room. I've got to be challenging all the time and I've got to be poking it with a stick to get something from the. It, it's not about that. It's about reading the situation, but looking at, like you say, potentially what does nice mean? Does nice mean staying in a safe space? And, you know, n not challenging and maybe being manipulated. And is that our own insecurities or lack of experience and, and just being aware of what's happening in the room when it's happening? Yeah, absolutely right. right. I've yeah. had clients leave my therapy room and I know, the excuse my French, but they're pissed off with me because I've challenged them in a session. Yeah, and, and I've uh, even got so as I've thought that they might not come back next week. <laughs> well, that's 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 the fear, maybe, but it's a risk, I think, in the duty of care to the client that we take. In transaction analysis, they have. If you ever study in transaction analysis, but you're going to perhaps hear these words, and I know we've done podcasts on this, so, and I know they're some of the most watched podcasts, by the way, of all, all that we've done, because uh, I've been looking recently at the sort of most popular podcasts over time. And these five that I'm going to say now are certainly have high tick throughs. But in TA, they have, you know, be strong. Yeah. You know, um, uh, please others, I think. Yeah. Being perfect. Yeah. Being strong. Trying hard as all adaptation styles, if you like. Yeah, uh, we could add be nice to that list. Yeah, yeah. Because <laughs> that's the way if, if those driver mechanisms. Um, it's a way of explaining how we've how children have adapted and survived in their childhood of origin to get by, and maybe to get by. Um, some kids have to be nice and not rock, rock the boats yeah and that's how they survived and that's how they carry through that script today and probably might have a lot of energy in the be perfect or be try hard or maybe a new driver ta theory being nice be nice yeah i don't want to hear i don't want podcasters to hear the I'm using being nice necessary derogatory term because I, I think that like many of us grow up and have to please to survive and maybe people grow up to having to be nice and to keep things safe as a way of getting on in the world. Yeah. And if therapists haven't done their own therapy on this on the early decisions they've made, I think they could enact that out or that position out in the therapy world just the same. Mm. Yeah, yeah. And I I I don't like conflict. Do you know what I mean? I I don't like yeah, I don't like conflict in, you know, my own personal life. But I don't see it as being conflict when it's in the therapy room. You know, being challenging in the therapy room to me, as long as it's for the good of the client and it's got a therapeutic basic to it, then I see that as me doing my job, not just being argumentative or, I don't know, yeah, picking at faults or things like that. Yeah, you're absolutely correct. And I always, you also made a very, very good point as well about the sequences of psychotherapy. And I think 
the first sequence, however long we want to put this at, whether it be one session, 10 sessions, uh, and that is the concentration on building up a working relationship with the client, mm. getting a trusting work, means the, the therapist might need to have a lot of emphasis on safety, security, and niceness. But later on, yeah. when they've got a relationship which, you know, is robust and trustworthy and um they may be more challenging yeah yeah and b being able to read to a certain extent what the client needs at the time mm, yes you know if, if something's happened during the week that you haven't seen the client and you know you want to be empathic that can be seen as being nice and maybe you know take it easy in that session <laughs> you know, because of something that's happened. It's not always about having to be challenging in order to get a result. It's about reading the situation. Absolutely. And I don't want podcasters to also listen to this, get confused between nice and nurture. Mm, yeah. Because uh, I that's think... That's a good we, point, that, yeah. Yeah, I think that we can be firm with our boundaries and challenging from a nurturing position. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. And that's that's modeling to the client as well that that can happen. That you know it's, it's conflict and challenging isn't always necessarily a bad thing. No, and I don't need I did I don't need my clients to you know how can I explain this? To be friends with me, or mm. to um, it's not, that's not what it's about. My job is the, what you have just said, actually, which is to um, help clients put a new script on the road, and that usually means some aspect of risk taken by me, if you like, in terms of challenge and courage, and helping them integrate that. Yeah. Which to me, you know, I, I know you touched on it earlier on about, you know, that and it, we talk about it a lot, the therapeutic relationship that, you know, if the client can come back and discuss it, do you know what I mean? If they have took offence, if they they do feel like they're being judged or, or you know, that we were harsh on them or they didn't like being challenged, that then that then comes back in the therapy room and, you know, we discuss that rather than, you know, the worst thing for me is that if I do something and it's been misunderstood or misinterpreted and then there's like a, yeah, there's, there's a grudge being held or there's something between us the next time we see each other. Oh. Oh. Yeah, that's right. Which is why I probably wouldn't challenge a client in the early days. <laughs> I, would, I would I would, build, make sure that we've got some sort of footing between us that they feel comfortable enough. And I will openly say to my clients, if you don't agree with what I'm saying, then it's okay for you to say, Jackie, you're way off the mark with this. I, I think it's a very good point between experience clinically and the beginning of our professional careers where we don't often, well, I experience trainees not often wanting to, you know, uh, scare their clients or um, like you've just said, so they don't come back. Yeah. But, uh, be oh and often they do this by being over nurturing yeah steering away from any type of conflict um steering away from any type of emotional expression yeah i can remember being really scared of a client having a reaction to something that we were doing in the therapy room and me not knowing how to deal with it you know how to ground the clients and how to get them back in the here and now so that when they left mm. they were in an okay place and back in adults I can remember being quite scared of that and if I had a histrionic client that was very tearful and very over the top with their emotions yeah being being scared so that's a very good point around experience yeah I think when you talk about in these pod, 107 podcasts as it be said I know I think a lot of our conversation um hopefully we talked about the difference between the different levels of experience clinically 
when yeah. you may act differently. Yeah. Experience in this job um, is, you know, is important to recognise, I think. Yeah. And that's why supervision is so important, particularly in the early days as well, that you can take it to somewhere and say, you know, this happened in a session. And for you to get reassurance that you're doing the right thing. Mm -hmm. And you know what? You don't need the supervisor to be nice either in this parallel process world. You know, it's like <laughs> I would want a supervisor that is, you know, where we have a good relationship, but will also challenge and say, well, you know, what did this transaction mean? Or uh, have you perhaps been too adapted there? Or whatever it is. Yeah. Uh, so there are important things we're talking about, really. I don't think you'll find anything in books called the nice phenomena, but we could put a, a sort of plea for a new driver in TA. We could. Nice. Yes, <laughs> yes. The be Which nice. And, you know, generally in society, it's okay to be nice. It's, oh, I was going to say, yeah, yeah, that's what I said. But yeah, it's not something I want to particularly slander on. Uh, the point of saying this is that I, I would like to give a plea as well as you know, the nice phenomena is that we can, you know, build up a relationship, you know, have a secure base and perhaps sometimes help people move into areas which they fear so much. Yeah. Where the actual healing could be. Yeah. Yeah. Another good podcast, Bob. Yeah. And thank you. Thank you. I enjoyed talking about that. And uh, I, ho I hope people have been listening to this gives them reflections of thought anyway yeah and to leave them with the question is your therapist a nice therapist <laughs> <laughs> or not or not yeah so what we'll be talking about next time bob which uh, I, what have you got I'm really looking forward to this one is the, the the most common injunctions which again is a, a ta term isn't it that we use a lot well, say say what did I, I misheard the title? What did you say there? Well, the title is very long, and I think it needs a, a bit of modification. But oh, right. the major and most common injunctions that clients present with in therapy and how to deal with them. So oh, we need God. to talk about what an injunction is. Yeah, in yeah. <laughs> that's a mouth. <laughs> it is. It is. Injunctions really are, are, are is a stop message, but uh, we'll find a a sort of you know a condensed, a condensed title. Is of that title because we couldn't even get it onto the introduction bit when you download it it'll just miss out so yeah how we deal with injunctions and how i don't we'll think about it and talk we'll about think about it. it but yeah that's what the next one's about all about injunctions so if you want to see what the working title turns into you'll have to tune in <laughs> next week <laughs> yeah, yeah 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 until then bob thank you so much thank you very much take care bye 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 You've been listening to The Therapy Show, Behind Closed Doors podcast. We hope you enjoyed the show. Don't forget to subscribe and leave us a review. We'll be back next week with another episode.